Hey guys, Double Wide Six here, and uh, got a question for you. When does a light bulb burn out? Hmm. Well, it actually burns out right when you hit the switch. So if you ever notice a light bulb burning out and looking like that, it always happens instantly when you hit the switch. And the reason for that is because our light bulbs, at least in the United States, they're powered on 120 volts of AC current. And right when you hit the switch, there's a fluctuation of power. Our power is normally regulated, but the instant you hit the switch, it takes a little bit of time, some milliseconds, just for that light bulb to get exactly 120 volts. And it might get more than 120 volts and usually that's what's actually happening when a light bulb burns out so recently I just made a video on uh, rebuilding NICAD batteries and um, there are a ton of videos on the internet about shocking these things and in the past couple maybe about a year and a half ago I tried to shock some batteries and I was relatively successful you can tie a couple of these 18 volts in series and take the two leads off those and shock another battery with uh, 36 volts. So that'll work. And basically what you're doing is these batteries over time develop like whiskers or something they call it between the plates. And they don't charge properly. They don't discharge properly. They start to get a weird memory. And by shocking the battery, and this is for nickel cadmium batteries. It won't work for lithium ion. In fact, those will even blow up. But you can shock them and you can get them to charge properly. And uh, I did that and I was very successful. And I did come across a, a video on YouTube that uh, a young, sounded like a young kid made. And uh, it works off that same principle as that light bulb and uh, I'm gonna show you what he did and uh, we're gonna try it out with this battery alright so this battery is 18 volt and uh, if we put our leads on it you could see it's got about 7.27 volts alright it's been sitting kinda in a cold garage but I can tell you for a fact that it doesn't necessarily take a charge it'll It'll charge a little bit, but it, it won't really hold the charge. It's kind of sort of worn out, okay? So here, here's the, uh, the method that this kid was talking about. And this, this one's actually a Ryobi. So I'm just going to stick it in there. And you can see on the charger, you're getting the, uh, the code here, these, the, the uh, I don't know, yellow and the green light, which means it's not charging. Okay, so here's our battery. We're going to take a look at the voltage. And we're showing about 6.2, 6.3 volts. All right. And here, here's what you need to do. You take this battery, and the reason I'm showing you this is because it's like the easiest way to possibly try and jump start a battery you put in your charger okay just like that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in and unplug the charger like this alright and I'm just doing this with an extension cord so that you can see so you just wanna put it in there until those lights flicker a little bit and you can see see how they're all kind of flickering and what you're actually doing is you're you're sending in this case I think this charger sends about 36 volts to the battery when it charges I'm not sure we can double check it but anyhow if it sends 30 volts with this quick load of power after it comes through that transformer in the charger instead of sending like 36 volts it might be sending a higher voltage like 36 uh, like 40 okay or a little more maybe 42 who knows so anyhow after you do that about I don't know five six ten times you can plug this thing in and you'll notice that from those shocks the battery 
sorry about that the battery actually resets okay and uh, it's now on fast charge and it doesn't have that code so that's a real quick way to send a pretty good sized jolt to your battery now let's check this instantly we'll pull this thing off the charger okay and we'll go right here And you can see it's showing 21.0 volts, okay? And it's, it's going to drop very fast because it's not really charged. It's just, uh, you know, it basically got popped with a little bit of power. So it's showing in the battery, but the batteries aren't actually charged all the way up. So what we want to do is take this battery, and now that, uh, you know, we removed the memory and we cleaned up the little whiskers, now you want to give it a charge and sure enough you're going to find out that this is a really successful method it's really easy to do so if you have some older NICAD batteries uh, it's worth giving it a shot now I don't know if every single charger works exactly the same as this one but for the, the Royobi one it works really well and at work we have uh, some Hitachis and I did it with them and it seemed to really work okay so here's what I want to check I'm gonna just check the uh, the voltage that this charger has because it's actually trying alright so it's about 30 volts I don't know if you can see it's giving 30 volts I got my leads on the wrong way so 30 DC volts so that's what it takes to, to charge, and that, that'll charge that battery in about one hour. So I found this very interesting and uh, very helpful. So anyhow, I am double wide six, and uh, at the bottom of this video, I will put a link to uh, a real good meter that you can use for uh, testing batteries, testing electrical and lawn mowers, tractors and uh, automobiles and things like that. Um, I recently uh, got it off of Amazon and I'll put the link to that in the video. It's, it's not this charger, I have it actually in my house, but I'll put a link to it. I really like it. Alright, so thanks for watching and have a great day.